Oh, hello. Like everyone else with great taste, I am obsessed with the Peacemaker show, which, as you can see from my hastily put together costume specifically for this video that I thought of a half hour ago, I love it. I am sure that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, theory videos and Easter egg videos and look at what I caught that nobody else did videos on the Peacemaker show itself. Um, I haven't watched those, so I, I don't really care what they have to say. All I care about is the intro dance sequence to the HBO Max series Peacemaker. And yes, there will be spoilers for the first four episodes of the show. First of all, I love the choreography of the intro. Uh, the dancing just sort of seems like it'd be something that somebody with John Cena's thickness and body size, that's how they would dance. I was reading a Reddit thread on the first uh, three episodes, I believe, of the Peacemaker show while I was working on my upcoming comic book, Destructo Boy on sale soon. And I found a comment on that thread in the DC Cinematic subreddit by user Sneelgy, or Sneelg. And so I read their comment and I thought, hey, I'll steal it and make my own content out of it. The comment by Sneelg says, Everyone is missing, I think, the big hint in the opening credits. They're all dancing completely emotionlessly, just like they're being puppeteered by butterflies. James Gunn has even said the dance hints at what's to come. I think they'll all end up butterflies and made to dance just like this. It's not just a random, awesome opening sequence. It's a preview of the season finale. Now, as someone who took a couple of film classes in college, I really know how to uh, dissect and speculate and theorize uh, to the deeper meanings that may or may not be there in scenes. First, I'll be discussing the dancing and the visual cues, then I'll start going over a little bit more about the song itself. From his introduction out of the darkness, we can see that Vigilante is far looser and fluid than all of the others who are very angular in movement. And you also notice that because of his mask, his face obviously can't be seen. Uh, we don't see his dead expression like everyone else. The butterflies probably enter the human through the, the head area, so hopefully the mouth or nose or ears, I really... Oh, I hope to God those are the only orifices they enter. The three begin to dance, they do a little hands across the body, then they do this thing where the hand comes up and then down. Sort of similar to what we see the butterflies' tongues looking like when they eat. Peacemaker then does a little spinning sort of disco thing, which could be, you know, a goofy white man dance, or also showing uh, the sort of flying saucer alien ships of the butterflies themselves coming and taking off from Earth. The lyric during this scene is, I'll go straight to the stars on that flying thing. Hmm. I'll go straight to the stars on that flying thing. Starting to add up, don't you think? Odebayo then rips open her jacket real quick, uh, like the wings of a butterfly opening up. Then we get the intro to Mern and Harcourt's little dance number. Notice that Mern dances a little more aggressively, I guess? compared to Harcourt or any of the others, really, because he's a butterfly. Yeah, it seems pretty obvious, I guess, that the reason he's such a competent dancer during this scene and he goes so quickly is because he knows the routine. He's a butterfly. The uh, hallway that they burst out of, the doors, they swing wide open, like a butterfly's wings, I guess. But notice the sort of green hue in the background coming out of the hall. It resembles the green membrane thing that is in the, uh, what's he, a senator or something? The butterfly that took over a senator's body. There's that green membrane doorway leading down to his weird little butterfly cave that also had that similar green glow. The weird arm swing crouch walk, you know, resembles the butterflies puppeteering humans and trying to act like humans. And then we get to the big dance number with all, or most of the characters. Uh, notice that their arm movements resemble wings, as do the arrows in the background. Everyone standing in the center section of the stage looks like they have wings of light emerging from their backs. And taking a closer look at the odd little shuffle dance, we can see that Vigilante points his arms in the opposite direction of everyone else. 
Peacemaker pushes away as everyone else moves towards him, flapping their wings after him. Peacemaker might be the last member of the team to be infected. Uh, he doesn't realize it for whatever reason, and he's the final guy to go, leaving Vigilante to uh, save the day, or at least wake Peacemaker up to save the day. Everyone flips the bird at the same time, except Vigilante is the only one who does so in such an odd manner. While he still does it, he does so in a quizzical way. Like, he's not really sure what's happening, but he's sort of just following along anyway. Then we see Peacemaker shoot his dad, who will most likely become the secondary antagonist uh, of the series as the White Dragon. Perhaps his weird portal to the plane outside of reality that he has that weird science fiction-y workshop in has something to do with the butterflies. Perhaps it was manufactured by the butterflies and he got his hands on it. Maybe he is a butterfly. Maybe he had sex with a butterfly. And that's why when he puts his hands down in front of his crotch and explodes them out, it's because he has uh, some sort of weird alien STD. We also rarely see Peacemaker's father in the intro dance itself. Um, signifying that, you know, he won't be in the show that much as he's amassing his disciples in jail and uh, trying to become, you know, he's going to become the white dragon again, I would imagine. Ekomos? Ekonomos? How the fuck do you say it? Steve Agee's character. Um, everybody moves aside for him. Maybe that means something. Maybe it doesn't. Um, maybe he's like Jeff Goldblum in Independence Day and he, uh, puts an alien computer virus into the butterfly's ship or whatever and, uh, stops the invasion. I don't know. It sort of feels like there is a reason that, I don't know, he gets his own little dance number. Detective Song emerges from the floor like she's coming out of a cocoon. And the last little movements of their hands resemble the UFO ship that Peacemaker found in the apartment opening and closing. We see the janitor that Peacemaker got high with, so I figure that means uh, the entirety of uh, Evergreen City, town, Evergreen, will be infected and taken over by butterflies. Uh, assuming they aren't already. Fun fact, the summer lilac, also called the butterfly bush, is an evergreen plant. This means that the plant's leaves stay green and is functional for about most of the year, if not the whole year itself. Butterfly bushes are called that because they produce a whole lot of nectar, and butterflies love that shit. Also, Evergreen is in Charlton County, which is a great little reference to the original publisher of Peacemaker, Charlton Comics. As we go on through the musical itself, Peacemaker, Vigilante, and Judo Master are the only ones who really exhibit complicated movements. And we finally get to what I believe is the biggest theory um, that I'm going to propose during this whole video. I'm gonna sneeze. The Old Neighbor. That's right. I think you might know where I'm going with this. Played by Mel Tuck. He's the one behind all of this. A sort of monarch butterfly, if you will. And here's why. Vigilante, an enemy to all things villainous and evil and bad. Uh, he just leaps right past him, doing his cool flips, heeding no mind to the old man. No one suspects it's the old man. Why would they? He's an old man. But the way the old man makes his appearance is very interesting. He leaps out from behind the wall like the goddamn Wizard of Oz. F then he frantically shuffles around, his face mysteriously hidden, and finally he reveals himself. And after that, we see some footwork that one would definitely not expect from a man of his age. And then finally, during the big final dance scene, we see the entire main cast. But it also is revealing who are the butterflies and who isn't. Look at their dancing. After they do that little hands down stomp thing, they bring their hands up and grab their heads. And Peacemaker is wearing his helmet. Maybe the butterflies do enter through the ears and, uh, that has something to do with it. Maybe the, his helmet will stop the butterflies from uh, actually infecting him. Maybe he'll be infected by one, but he'll use his, um, whatever the blast helmet is, or it's the, uh, the x-ray helmet. He puts the x-ray helmet on and sees that everyone in the little Task Force X, well, that's not what they're called, what? The, the Argus group that he's been uh, drafted into, he sees the butterflies in their heads. 
Murn and Vigilante are up on platforms, three steps high, front and center. Murn also opens his coat for some reason, um, possibly alluding to like a something up his sleeve. Uh, he's hiding something that we don't know about. Maybe there are uh, different factions of butterflies and Murn is actually one of the bad ones. And that's the reason that he is hunting these butterflies down is because they are uh, posing a threat to him and his group or um, he's stopping their invasion so his can continue as planned. Mm -hmm. Who am I to say? Just some weird guy on the internet, that's who. But you should trust me. Like Peacemaker trusted that guy on Twitter. Vigilante, of course, moves a lot less methodically than everyone else, uh, as to be expected, since he, I doubt he's gonna be infected by a butterfly. But notice that the old neighbor directly in the center of everyone. He's also on a platform, but this time it is two steps high, and he's seated. Almost like a throne. Yeah, I know that this is obviously because of his age and like, you know, the intense dances required for that. But fuck off, let me have my fun. And uh, Song and Adebayo's wife are also on platforms in the back. Um, I don't really know if that means anything. Maybe the wife is some sort of um, like a leak or a rat or something. Uh, helping somebody else out, some other group. Maybe she's leaking information to Waller. Or it's just because it looked better in terms of the scene itself to have those two characters risen up since they're a little shorter than everybody else around them. Augie ends his dance a little later than the others and he sort of messes up here and there. Uh, that could be accidental or it could be intentional to show that while he is a villain, he's not going to be infected by the butterflies or that he's working with them in some way. And finally, Judo Master pops out of the ground like he's leaping out of a grave from death itself. He leaps before the Peacemaker, arms outstretched both as a flourish of dance and also as a way to stop Peacemaker from doing anything too hasty. Judo Master knows something more about the butterflies than the group themselves, as was revealed when he was shot by Adebayo. Clearly, he has some sort of rapport with the butterflies because he was instructed to go tell the others of what happened when the Senator's house is attacked. Peacemaker then lifts Judo Master up above everyone else because he has the truth about the butterflies. And, you know, holding up the truth or whatever metaphor you want to use. On to the song itself. Do You Want to Taste It by Wigwam. Here's a couple little things I made note of while uh, watching the intro to Peacemaker about 45 times. Probably more than that. The song makes reference to space and the cosmos. I'm going straight to the stars on the flying thing. Also, there are the lyrics. Sex and sexuality are a big part of the Peacemaker show. Autobio and her wife uh, sort of lovey-dovey and get a little frisky when they're first introduced, and they also have a conversation about having kids. Um, there's, of course, the sexting. Peacemaker finds out about the butterflies because he had sex with one of them. Harcourt is sexually harassed in the bar before she kicks their asses. Vigilante and Peacemaker have a threesome with Amber. The list, the list just goes on, people. It is so much, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I can't even list it all. There is also, of course, the intense hip thrusting. And the lyric also represents the invasion of Earth itself by the butterflies. As seen in um, episode two or three, um, it shows that there are butterflies located all around the globe. But here's the, uh, what I think the biggest hint in the song itself to uh, this show having a sort of invasion of the body snatchers scenario. This is also the belief system of both Peacemaker and Vigilante. Uh, they're very set in their ways, feel uh, such a moral superiority over others, and they both think that the, uh, the world is wrong. Not them. That's the character journey that Peacemaker is on for this show. Uh, his experience and his killing of Rick Flagg is what finally broke him to realize that, hey, maybe I was wrong. It also signifies that there's a butterfly uh, invasion that no one really sees coming. Everybody's going to be infected by him. Just you wait. And in episode four, Steve Agee is... Um, he has trouble breathing after Judo Master kicks his ass, which is shown to be uh, from asthma. 
But what if it's because he got hit in the head? Because he had a pretty bloody nose coming. And you know what else is in the head? The butterfly. What if he's already been infected and it happened sometime during the um, raid upon the senator's manor? Um, we have seen firsthand that the butterfly didn't die when its host body was shot point blank in the face with a shotgun. So why are we just sort of assuming that the three other butterflies in the senator's family are dead after they all were headshotted? Maybe one of them escaped and took over uh, Steve Agee's body. And of course the line, you know, comes from the fact that the butterflies eat that honey nectar stuff. Um, and they seemingly produce it as well, based on the trailer for episode 5. And while not featured in the intro itself, but in the actual song... And I think that really speaks for itself. And that, that concludes my little video on The Peacemaker Show. It is a great show, I highly recommend it to everybody. Um, it is very violent, it is very, uh, adult-themed. So if that's not your groove, then don't get into it, I guess. Let me know what you thought of The Peacemaker Show. If you have been watching it in the comments below, let me know what your theories are. What if, what do you think is going to happen? You think Batmite's going to show up? Doubt it. You think Mr. Mind is going to show up from, uh, from the Captain Marvel movie? I kind of hope not, because I was hoping to see him in, uh, in the big screen, but I don't think that's going to happen. But I'd definitely be okay with it if he was here. Uh, as always, make sure you like and subscribe and uh, follow me on Instagram for posts on my upcoming comic books. That's at NotBlakeWild and at Smokey's Videos. And also I post my comics that I'm working on on Patreon. Uh, each week there are uh, new pages to A Dead Fish in the Grass, which is a 166 page horror graphic novel set in the Old West. Uh, I'll see you next time for another one of these videos. Bye.